pull my phone down. Good morning. Welcome to Calvary Chapel Inland Devo 30. I'm Pastor Ruben. Thank you for joining us today. We stream live on Facebook every Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. And if you're in the neighborhood, come on by and join us. We're at 5383 Martin Street in Harupa Valley, tucked away in a cozy little community. <laughs> like saying that for our little community. Uh, and we all meet here and then we pray afterwards. So if you have any prayer requests, please post them or private message me and we'll pray for you. Today we're in the book of 1 Thessalonians and we're in chapter 2. So let's go ahead and, and pray and get started. Oh Lord, thank you Father for such a beautiful weekend Lord. Thank you for the weather. It sure does remind us Lord that when we die we will not be going to hell. We'll be missing that heat Lord God. <laughs> we'll be in paradise where the temperature will be perfect Lord. I mean, I'm talking about to the point zero, 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 one perfect, Lord. That's how great it's going to be when we get to heaven, Lord. And I can't wait for that, Lord. As Paul said, absent from the body is present with the Lord. And Lord, I thank you for beginning this new week, Lord, just at your presence, at your feet, Lord. May we be like Mary today, Lord. I'm sorry, like Mary, yeah. Like Mary, Lord, and just sit at your feet, Father. And just glean from your precious word, Lord, as our hearts, Lord, are desiring to know you, but also, Lord, to apply the scriptures to our lives, Lord. Help us, Lord, to take the truth and make it a part of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning, Patty. Thank you. You could join us today. Katie from, I think it's Oklahoma, joining us. Also, uh, Patty Weeks. God bless you guys. So we're in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let's go ahead and, and get right into it. As you know, Paul is dealing with some doubts and concerns about the Lord's return. Um, and I think that's a truth that has happened, you know, periodically where people doubt, well, oh, God's not coming back. I remember the Sam Harris, who was a comedian, and he had a whole sit uh, uh um, sitcom on that about the Lord not returning and he was a preacher's kid and his father would always tell him about the Lord's return and, and so he did this whole skit with Peter and you know Jesus and all that and then he'd say at the end you know he's not here he's not coming you know and that was a whole joke of it all and of course he went home he, he ended up passing away and hopefully he repented and turned to the Lord so Paul is dealing with these issues he's the founder of this church and he's going to explain that to us in chapter 2 so let's go ahead and, and start in verse 1. For you yourselves know, brethren, that our coming to you was not in vain. As a minister and as a Christian, as we go out to share the gospel with our families and friends or within the church or community, oftentimes we think that, uh, we, we ask that question, was it worth it, you know? Well, is there going to be any fruit or was I just wasting my time coming out here uh, to whatever event or sharing with that person's and sometimes we get uh, a little um, sad and depressed because they didn't respond the way we wanted them to respond and so we think well maybe I just wasted my time and Paul's telling them here look it's not in vain that we came out there's a purpose and God has a reason and he's going to do what he's going to do so anytime we're preaching the gospel. Anytime we're witnessing, it's not in vain, guys. It really is not in vain. You're, you are planting seeds or you're watering. And you don't necessarily have to see the harvest. As long as you know I am planting seeds and I am watering, and they may not receive it at this moment. The harvest may come later, but I am planting and watering into their hearts. So it, it is always worth it and not in vain. So Paul here, he said that it was not in vain for him to come to the Thessalonians. But even after we had suffered before and were spitefully treated at Philippi, as you know, we were bold in our God to speak to you the gospel of God in much conflict. And that's Paul's whole ministry, right? A ministry of conflict. I guess if you wanted a ministry, that's the ministry that Paul had. It's a ministry of conflict. And it's what the Lord told him that, that would happen, right? He told him that part of your ministry is going to be suffering. You're going to suffer much things for me, the Apostle Paul. Now, I'm sure at the time he's like, what? What are you talking about? Um, I hope I don't suffer too much. 
But as Christ suffered, so we suffer. It's part of the bargain. It's part of the deal of becoming a Christian. And that suffering comes from various places. Uh, it could come from our family members who aren't believers. It could come from the community and your neighbors that aren't believers. It can come from work people that you work with that aren't believers. Or it can be believers that are even persecuting you <clears throat> within your own church and so forth. So don't be a persecutor. Be an encourager. So Paul is saying, in much conflict, uh, we were treated in Philippi. Then he goes on, for our exhortation did not come from deceit or uncleanliness, nor was it in guile. And so he came with tr in truth and in sincerity. That is so important that when we go to someone, it's that we're sincere and we're not trying to manipulate anybody at all, but just be sincere and truthful. But as we have been approved by God, to be entrusted with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God who tests our hearts. Uh, another important truth and principle for our lives is that we don't please men. We do it to please God. So important. It's so easy to fall into that trap. How come they don't notice me? How come they haven't you know, asked me to become an elder or a pastor at, by this time? And, and sometimes you'll get overlooked. And I think that sometimes God does that for a reason. Maybe your heart's not ready yet. He knows. I remember years ago, uh, uh, an older man that I looked up to, very wise man, he was, uh, he was uh, a coroner uh, sheriff, I guess, is who handles that. And so he had a gun and the whole bit, so he was working for Riverside County. I remember one time where he, he saw this guy speeding uh, down the road, so he clocked him, and he actually chased him for quite a while while he was trying to get a hold of the police to take over, you know. We were coming back down from a retreat, and he was always doing his job. And so, uh, neat guy, uh, knew the word, uh, was probably in church for two, three, four years, and then all of a sudden he was, he was leaving. And I remember talking with him, I said, why are you, why are you going? Why, aren't, why don't you stick around? He says, oh, I've been here for a while, and my heart, I have a heart for the Lord, I have a heart to really serve more, get involved more, and I was hoping by now I could be an elder or so forth, you know? And so he was waiting and waiting and waiting, and they just overlooked him for whatever reason. Um, and he didn't make it known. He just trusted in the Lord that it was the Lord that was gonna raise him up, and he didn't have to make it known. And he was pretty much doing everything an elder uh, would have been doing, and so he just got overlooked. You know, I wasn't in charge at that point. I was nobody, <laughs> still nobody, uh, but, um, it really helped me to see, see that I need to be always diligent to be looking at people and making sure that they're all being utilized. And I know some people don't want to be, and they get offended that. I don't want to be utilized. I just want to come to church sitting and leave. You know, I don't want to serve. I don't want to help. I don't want to be involved. And sometimes I overdo it and, and try to get them involved, and it might be too much, and they can't take it either. And so I've got to find that balance somehow, you know? It's hard to, hard to do, though. Uh, so Paul goes on and says that we must serve the Lord and not man, for neither at any time did we use flattering words, as you know, uh, or a cloak or a pretext for covetousness. God is witness. Nor did we seek glory from men, neither from you or from others, when we might have made demands as an apostle of Christ. Um, that was one of Chuck's principles, right? Don't seek glory from men. Do not seek to, uh, to be rewarded by accolades, and by great commas. Just serve the Lord completely. Uh, it's something that's important that we don't... This is, this is important, guys. This is really important. Right here, this, this principle is important for us. We need to give God the glory. Amen. We need to give God the glory. We can't take from His glory. It is yes. His work. He's working in us. The Bible says he begun a good work in us and he's faithful to complete it. It's him doing the work in us. So anything we do, glory to God. Now, now, I get people don't understand that because they're not reading their Bible. They're not understanding that God will not share his glory with anyone. And so they think, well, but you did it. No, 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 you don't understand. I know I did it. I, I know I had to go over there and, and fly to South Sudan or fly to India. I know I had to do it, but that's the Lord that put the desire in my heart and gave me the strength to do that. If it was me, I wouldn't even be here right now. 
So they don't understand that. And so when you say, well, glory to God, and they, and they want to be very forceful at times. No, well, you were a part of that. No, I, I get that. But glory to God, I'm not going to rob God's glory. It's only because of what he has done in my life. So be very careful uh, not to be looking to man. Um, and, and we do. We look to man. How come, they don't, how come they don't notice me? How come they're not approving of me? They must not like me. You know, they must not care about me. No, just do it unto the Lord and let the Lord uh, have the glory completely. He goes on in verse 7, But we were gentle among you, just as a nursing mother cherishes her own children. <clears throat> so affectionately longing for you, we were well pleased to impact, impart to you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives, because you had become dear to us. And that is part of our fellowship, right? You can't impart your life to somebody if you're not going to church, if you're not fellowshipping with one another. Last night, Virginia hosted a a night of lights, you know, and so a lot of kids were there and they were all having fun and the yard was lit up with the light show and they showed a movie and, and so that's imparting a part of our lives. That, that's what we do. It's not just, okay, everyone, we're just coming to church, I'm teaching, she's going to children's ministry and then after that, see you later, don't call, don't bug us, you know, that's our job and that's what we're doing. No, 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 we literally impart our lives to you. People come over, and they go swimming, they hang out, they stay, and they stay, <laughs> you know, because we're imparting our lives. And that's what Christianity is. You impart your very lives. Now, there are pastors who, as soon as they teach, they're gone. You know, uh, to them, they feel that is their call and nothing else. But Paul here says, look, not only did we preach the gospel to you, but we actually... Uh, gave you our own lives, we became a part of you. Uh, for you remember, brethren, our labor and toil, for laboring night and day, that we might not be a burden to any of you. We preach to you the gospel of God, another aspect of Paul's life. He wasn't a burden to people. He wasn't a burden to people. And so as leaders, we have to be careful that we're not taking, 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 but that we're giving, 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 giving. Um, important. I, I try my best not to ask for things. I try my best not to partake of things because I don't want to fall into that trap that I'm expecting uh, to receive this. Once in a while, you know, my flesh flares up, you know, and, and it's like, oh, I would love to have one of those, Lord, you know, but I don't say anything, you know, and then all of a sudden he'll, he might bless me, but then he might not because it's okay, you know, that he doesn't if, if that's what the Lord wants. So I don't expect anything uh, from anyone. You are now. <laughs> so every October, and it, it comes along every year. You know, it's Pastors Appreciation Month, and, mm -hmm. and so you hear all these radio shows, you know, talking about it, and little quick ads, and this and that. And if you can't, you know, afford to give something to your pastor, then pray for your pastor, at least. And I love that part. At least pray for me, you know. But every year it comes around, and it reminds me, and I'm always reminded. Okay, that's not why we do it. You know, that's not the purpose of it. You know, and so. Another year passes by with no appreciation. No, there are those that appreciate what we do here, and I know that. But I don't want to expect that, and I don't think that we should. Our appreciation comes from the Lord alone. And I think that is very healthy, because then you can become bitter and angry at people because they're not appreciating you the way you think that you should be appreciated. But once in a while, you know, God just blesses me, someone just gives a great gift, and sometimes it's money, sometimes it's other gifts, you know, a card, a little trinket, you know, of some sort, and I always put it up on the shelf and, and so forth. So it's nice, too, to see that, that God touches his people's hearts. Verse 10, you are witnesses, and God also, how devoutly and justly and blamelessly uh, we behaved ourselves among you as among you who believed, as you know how we exhorted and comforted, comforted and charged every one of you as a father does his own children, that you would have a walk worthy of God who called you into his own kingdom and glory. And that's the heart of every pastor is to see people walking with the Lord. I shared that yesterday before I started my message. My heart is not here to receive anything from anyone. My heart is to pour into you and help you with your walk with the Lord. And that can be difficult sometimes. Um, had a situation this week, and uh, some of the ladies were going to go to this conference, and all of a sudden it got canceled. 
uh, some backed out, some situations took place and so forth. And I went up to the person that was a part of it and I says, no, you have to go. And that was hard for me to do because it almost sounds demanding. I says, no, you made a commitment. You made a promise. I know that blah, 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 and this, all this stuff was happening. I get that. That's the enemy. That's life. That's struggle. But you're committed. Christ didn't say, that's it. I'm here at the cross. Oh, you know what? This is just too much for me. I had a, I, I had a hard beating. I had a hard rebuking and mocking. And so at this point, I think I'm just going to step out of the way, you know, and just go rest for a while. No, he was committed all the way to the cross. All the way to the cross. And so, and, and I know this to be true, and, and that's one of the reasons why I did it. And so I encourage them, you need to go. Even if it's just you, you need to keep your word and so forth. And I could tell that they were literally like, okay, okay, I know, I know, you're right. All right. And they went, and then they came back, and they're like, we were so blessed. Yes. Oh, man, the Lord just ministered. And I go, of course, of course. Anytime you sit at the feet of Jesus, you're always going to get ministered to. Anytime you go to a conference, you're going to get ministered to. I knew that was going to happen. I knew that was going to happen. I'm sorry. We just got turned around, and now you're looking at my huge face. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. Now I can't rotate it. I'm trying to rotate my phone. It's telling me to rotate my phone and it's, it won't. Well, we had a little difficulty here. Um, we're not finished yet. Okay. Technical difficulty. Technical you can watch me upside down. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're having problems. Oh, wow, I can't believe it. Okay, well, now it went the other way. This is the, okay, here, let's do this. Oh, now I did it. Now it went. No, it's not going to work. It's just totally messed up. Okay. Sorry. I don't know what to do now. At this point, we're finished. Thanks for joining us. I'm sorry about this. We'll, we'll see you on Wednesday. God bless you guys. And don't forget to uh, post your prayer requests if you have any. And then I will, I will pray for you. God bless.